Hello and welcome back to another episode of DCS in 10 minutes or less with the Mirage 2000. This is episode 6, which will be a multiple part episode that goes over navigation. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into it. Alright, so this is going to be a pretty straightforward video. We're going to go over our common HUD symbology, our navigation symbology within the HUD. And after that, we're going to go over the HUD command panel down here. Uh, we're not going to go over every switch and dial. We're just going to go over what we need for navigation. Also, if you notice, we got snowflakes falling from the HUD. This is a Christmas Easter egg, so if you're watching this in the future, you're not going to have it. I figured I'll show you it since it's pretty cool. Alright, so as we get on topic, and pause track IR. Alright, so make sure your HUD is actually in navigation mode. So right now it's not. We have a weapon selected, which is indicated right here. So the way you do that, you're going to go to your HOTAS, and you're going to use the command C and then neutral. Alright, now we actually have navigation mode selected. The command for that, again, is CNM neutral. All right, so top left, we have our calibrated airspeed. Right below that, we have our Mach. So if you're below 390 knots, you're not going to have a Mach number. But if you're above 390, that's when the Mach, Mach number starts showing up. Right here in the middle, we have our heading scale or heading tape, however you want to call it. Right below that, we have a triangle and a line. So the line's indicating where the nose is pointing. And the triangle is indicating the aircraft's actual bearing and uh, direction of travel. So if they're separated like this, the reason why it would be like a cross, for example, causing uh, adverse yaw on the airframe. Alright, so top right, we have our barometric altitude right here. Right below that, we have a selected altitude. So right now we have our selected uh, radar altitude, which is indicated right here. So if you want, you just have your barometric, radar, or your minimum altitude. On the track IR. All right, so now we have our flight path marker right here in the middle. This is pretty much your plane's flight from whatever input you give it instantaneously. Right here, we have our artificial horizon line. Then we have our pitch ladder. So we have the solid line right here. This is indicating a positive pitch, so we're pulling up. Uh, the pitch ladder is in increments of 5 degrees. So down here, we have a better example. So we have this dashed line. This is indicating negative pitch, so heading down towards the ground. And then we have another one down here indicating uh, 10 degrees, so 5 degrees down, 10 degrees down. All right, then we have our acceleration chevrons right here. These are amazing. I love these. I wish every plane had them. So how they work, if they're below your flight path marker, that means your plane is decelerating. And they're obviously they're way below, that means your plane's accelerating even faster. They're even, so if they're pretty much even with your flight path marker like it is now, your plane's at a constant speed. If it was above your flight path marker, that means your plane's accelerating. It's just like decelerating, if they're really high above your flight path marker that you don't even see them, that means your plane's hauling ass. Alright, to the right, we have our distance to uh, the waypoint selected, which is waypoint 1. So if the waypoint was within, or was further out than 10 nautical miles, you have a different symbology. Since it's within 10 nautical miles, you have this symbology right here indicating where uh, the waypoint is at. So if it was waypoint 2, for example, we got waypoint 2 selected, which is 15 nautical miles out. Here's a heading error right here that is indicating that the waypoint is in front of us uh, because it's pointing up. It was pointing behind us, like waypoint 3. That means the waypoint is behind us because it's pointing down. Also, on your radar display, that's waypoint 2 and waypoint 1. Alright, so that pretty much covers everything we need to go over with the common HUD symbology. Let me check my notes. Yep, we're good. Awesome. Throw those away. Alright, now let's go over the HUD controls. Alright, so right here is pretty much uh, your declutter. You really don't need it. I don't use it. All it does is gets rid of all the navigation stuff on your HUD, minus the basics. So like uh, your flight path marker, your speed, your altitude, and your waypoint. Alright, right here is uh, the altitude setting or display. I showed you this earlier. Right here is your uh, minimum altitude knob. So right now we have 2,270 selected. So if we go, let's say, to 2310, you're going to get this pull-up queue. And if it's in radar mode, you're going to get uh, a solid line, barometric solid line. 
or right here, so you don't have to do this mid flight, but when you do your startup, it'll be in the off position. When you flip it to on, it's automatically you're gonna do a self test. Then down here, same thing during startup, you'll flip it to on, and then yeah, it'll just turn on, it takes about 30 seconds. Right here is your HUD brightness, so if you're doing daytime nighttime ops, you can adjust your brightness off of that. Pretty straightforward video, guys. I'll see you on the next portion.